Hi, I'm Colonel Dawson, Plumber Commander of the 194th Armored Brigade, and I'd like to talk to you about some of the uh, achievements that we've uh, been able to get to with the 19 Kilo and 19 Delta 22 week uh, OSIT expansion, or I'd like to say OSIT transformation. Uh, when we look at the different conditions, or I should say considerations of lethality, uh, mental physical toughness, uh, vehicle proficiency, and field craft and discipline, uh, we've been able to increase uh, not only the rigor, but we've also been able to increase the proficiency, uh, especially on vehicle platforms. So starting with our 19 kilo armor crewmen, uh, we've been able to increase the uh, on-road and off-road driving up to 35 miles, which is significant. So now we go from vehicle familiarization to vehicle proficiency. That also includes uh, berm drills during our gunneries and also significant AARs. Now we don't train gunners per se, but what we do is we do provide some familiarization because we are aware that some units out in Forcecom, due to the turbulence of PCS, uh, we find that some of our brand new uh, soldiers, crewmen that arrive right from basic training within one month could actually sit in a gunner's seat. And uh, one thing that we want to do is make sure that they are familiar with the controls. You'll still have to train them in that level of proficiency, but they will be familiar and know where everything is. So what's the difference between the 16 week and 22 week? Well, some of the things that we've been able to have significant success on uh, loaders engagements on their loaders live fire M240 engagements during the gunnery exercises. Uh, we've also been able to add a call for fire training aspect for our 19 kilos. And then we've also been able to increase the level of physical fitness by 26 additional physical readiness training days. And also significant, all of them take the Army Combat Physical Fitness Test. And I like to tell you that the greater majority of them pass at the black standard. And they'll be ready to take an ACFT upon arrival to your first unit of assignment to see you all. The other thing I want to talk about is GST training, gunner skills test. So as I said previously, no, we're not necessarily training gunners, but everybody, as you know, has to go through the skills test for before gunnery. And we have them uh, not only familiarized with, but actually have to pass those things uh, to include vehicle ID and all those other dynamics uh, before they get into the uh, gunnery phase of their FTX. And speaking of FTXs, we've actually increased that by a total of six days. And then we've also given them the opportunity to have Combat Lifesaver certification if they're able to pass the exam at the very end. So we increased that by four days to allow for the opportunity to be certified. Also very significant and also very important, preventative maintenance checks. So PMCS has been increased to another four days on top of what they're already doing. And that's very important because not only should you be able to know how to drive that vehicle and load uh, the weapon system, but you also need to know how to properly take care of it. So now what I'd like to do is talk about, or I should say switch gears to our 19 Delta one station unit training. So going from 17 weeks to 22 weeks, very significant. And I will tell you another level of proficiency in lieu of familiarization. First thing we're going to talk about is uh, M4 qualification, much more significant and also comparable to what the infantry one station unit training soldiers are doing. We call it the DOT 40 standard, which also includes moving targets utilizing the M4. And as you know, the scouts could wind up on one of three platforms, uh, the Striker, the Humvee, as well as the Bradley. We're now able to give them familiarization in all three of those vehicles instead of just setting them uh, particularly on one. So if they ever PCS again for their second unit of assignment and they go from an SBCT to an IBCT or an ABCT, then they're ready to go. We've also added 22 additional weeks of physical readiness training for them. And we've also increased their vehicle maintenance on their different platforms by an additional day. Also very important for our scouts, as you know, they conduct reconnaissance and security. What does that mean? Well, they need to spend more time out in the field, not only being able to call for fire, but also being able to call in their sit reps and spot reports. So they need more fill time to be able to sharpen their craft. We've also given them the opportunity to be combat lifesaver certified and also understand how to infiltrate an enemy uh, location to be able to get close enough to get eyes on significant to be able to send reports back to their higher headquarters. Now, 
some things that we're getting ready to allocate for in future. Obviously, the optionally manned fighting vehicle, we are preparing our TSPs and POIs for that, uh, TSP training support packages, program of instruction for a POI, and for 19 kilos, mobile protected firepower. So when these platforms are ready to go, then we're ready to be able to train them on that. And I'd like to sum everything up with introducing uh, Lieutenant Colonel Nate Davis, who is the 181 Armor Battalion Commander and has every single 19 kilo armored crewman in the United States inventory comes through his battalion. And of course, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Carlos Caldwell. He is the 215 commander and also Lieutenant Colonel Colin Kremen, who's the 515 commander. Both their squadrons combined train all the United States Army's inventory of 19 Delta Cavalry Scouts. So hopefully you find this video helpful and useful. And thanks again for all that you do. Cool. Hello, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Nathaniel Davis, the commander of the 1st Battalion, 81st Armor Regiment at Fort Benning, Georgia, the only 19 kilo armor OSIT battalion in the United States Army. I'm here today to talk to you about the transition from 15 to 22 week 19 kilo OSIT. The intent behind the transition is to change from where we had been producing armor crewmen who were familiar as drivers, loaders, and gunners to ones that are confident and proficient as drivers and loaders, familiar as gunners, and ready to contribute at their first unit of assignment. The mission of the 1st Battalion, 81st Armor Regiment, is to perpetually transition civilian volunteers into soldiers by inspiring, developing, and training trainees through one station unit training and advanced individual training at Fort Benning, Georgia, in order to generate combat power for armored brigade combat teams and prepare soldiers for successful military careers. Our end state is that soldiers are inspired, developed, and trained, and prepared to add immediate value at their first duty stations. One of the ways the 19 kilo OSID differs from the 15 week to the 22 week model is the certifications that your soldiers receive when they're here at 1st Battalion, 81st Armor Regiment. For example, under the 22 week model, you now receive a soldier who is fully qualified in CLS through the 40 week course. That was not the case with the 15-week model. Additionally, during non-COVID conditions, you would be receiving a soldier who is certified level one combatives. Again, not the case in the 15-week model. In terms of lethality, the 22-week OSA model provides the time necessary to qualify the M17 pistol to the .40 standard. While we have not yet qualified to the standard in training, we are transitioning to the .40 standard for both the M17 pistol and the M4 carbine over the next fiscal year. As we made the transition from 15 to 22 week OSIT, we focused our efforts on a number of key areas. Increasing maintenance tasks, increasing gunnery skills training and testing, increasing the amount and rigor of field training, and increasing the amount and rigor of driver training. In determining how to create a proficient and confident 19 kilo armor crewman in the 22 week model, we had adopted a methodology whereby we increase the reps and sets of existing standards and tests and increase the rigor of those tests at the same time. One of the most significant changes from 15 to 22 week OSIT is the full training and testing of the gunnery skills test or GST, also table one of level one gunnery. In the previous model, GST was trained and tested only on the driver and loader specific tasks. Whereas in the 22 week model, GST is trained and tested at all tasks. All armor crewmen graduating from 181 Armor will have trained and tested on all tasks to include armored vehicle identification, both daylight and thermal. The 22 week OSIT has also offered us the opportunity to increase driver training significantly. This has resulted in an increase in simulated miles from 62 to 65, but more importantly, in live miles from 34 live miles, 15 of which are in and around the motor pool, to 50 live miles, of which the same 15 are in and around the motor pool. The driver training methodology then exists in three stages. The first stage being the tank drive, or the basic drive, where the crewmen learn how to drive the M1 series tank. The second stage is the technical drive. The technical drive allows the trainees to execute slower miles but more difficult tasks. 
In this case, negotiating an overpass, a Ford site, a simulated ABLV, a bridge, numerous battle positions, and applying emergency procedures. The third stage then is the tactical FTX. At the tactical FTX, the trainees negotiate movement formations and practice maneuver on uneven terrain. The extended 22-week POI provides us with the opportunity to increase maintenance training as well. In this case, we've instituted PMCS practical exercises each Monday, which mirror Motor Pool Monday in Force Comm units. During the practical exercise, the trainees are taught to PMCS the M1 series tank to the TM standard. Additional maintenance training includes lubrication order, wash track procedures, a full 10-day recovery process that culminates in the battalion recovery inspection with the battalion commander and command sergeant major. Additional field training in the new POI includes a six-day advanced drive technical FTX, four days of armor stakes that includes armor-specific tasks such as fire evacuation and rollover drills, as well as a competition, eight days of M1 tank live fire, and a five-day tactical FTX in which trainees learn to conduct assembly area operations to standard, as well as movement formations and maneuver techniques. In terms of physical training, the additional time has proven critical. The additional seven weeks results in 26 additional PRT sessions, reduces muscular skeletal injuries, and has increased the ability of trainees to pass the ACFT. Improvements to ACFT scores have included, on average, a 0.7 meter increase in the standing power throw, a 12 second improvement on the sprint drag carry, and a 49 second improvement to the two mile run. In terms of land navigation, 22 week OSET has allowed us to increase the number of iterations of training from one to three. This has resulted in an increase in those trainees receiving five out of five points to 88% from 32%. Additionally, this has resulted in a reduction in average course time by 18 minutes. In terms of live fire, all trainees will have fired from the gunner station and loaded four SABO and two MPAT rounds. Additionally, all trainees will have fired 100 rounds of caliber 50 ammunition from the TC station, as well as 700 rounds of 762 ammunition divided between the M240 coax, both day and night, and the loader's 240. Specifically, each trainee will engage four targets from the loader's M240 machine gun. This equates to the four targets that would be presented during a level two qualification gunnery. This is necessary to consider the loader confident and proficient on the M240 machine gun. In conclusion, 22 week OSIT is creating a more confident and proficient armor crewman who is ready to contribute to their first unit of assignment and builds a foundation from which they can build in the future to be a more skilled tanker over time. Hello, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Carlos Caldwell, the commander of the 2nd Squadron, 15th Cavalry Regiment. Today I want to speak with you about the transition from the 17-week to 22-week 19 Delta one-stop unit training. With the increase in global competition and the lethality of our peer and near-peer threats, the intent of the 22-week 19 Delta OSIT is to create a cavalry scout that is lethal, physically fit, proficient in the reconnaissance and security skills, and is prepared to deploy day one upon arrival at their first unit of assignment. The 22-week program has afforded us the opportunity to focus on lethality, field craft, discipline, physical fitness, mental toughness, and vehicle proficiency. So Cavalry Scouts will now graduate with a CLS certification as well as Combatives Level 1 certification. The 22 weeks has also allowed us to focus on rifle proficiency, specifically with transitioning to the DOT 40 standard. Cavalry Scouts will now leave qualified on their M4 with the backup iron sights, close combat optics, the Seaburn task, and night qualification. The additional five weeks in the 22 week OSID program has allowed us to really drill down on physical fitness training. Our scouts are now receiving an additional 22 PRT sessions. We've increased the road march mileage from 53 to 83, as well as increased our focus on the Army Combat Physical Fitness Test. What we're seeing now is our scouts are graduating at a much higher physical fitness level. The new program has also allowed us to begin familiarization with all scouts across multiple platforms. 
With the additional five weeks, we also are able to have more opportunities to train preventive maintenance checks and services. The 22-week program has also afforded the opportunity for our scouts to have more touch points with the different vehicle platforms they'll be seeing in the force. We've added more opportunities for preventive maintenance check training, as well as more opportunities to drive. To create proficient scouts, we've increased our allocated time for individual land navigation. We've increased our training opportunities for full gunnery skills testing. We've added more robust call for fire training, as well as four additional mission-oriented field training exercises, with the final field training exercise being a multi-platform exercise that focuses on scout skills tasks to include infiltration, reconnaissance, reporting, and camouflage. The 22-week cycle has allowed us to expand our communications instruction program with the addition of HF communications, as well as more practical exercises both in the field and in the classroom. We have completed two 22-week cycles the feedback we received from the force is that scouts that are completing the 22-week OSIP program are much more physically fit, tactically proficient, and prepared to integrate into their squads on day one. The Lion and Sabre Squadrons will continue to implement and refine the 22-week 19 Delta OSIP program. We remain committed to providing the force with peerless cavalry scouts that are prepared to integrate into their unit on day one.